hey guys hey everyone welcome back to my channel welcome if you're new here on this channel we try to cover all things reality tv news trending topics and today we're going to be talking about a topic that has been trending for well it's really been trending for the past few days since like this past friday when law crime network released a ton of body cam ring cam footage from the ruby frankie a passengers jody hildebrandt case um if you haven't been keeping up with this case and you're not familiar with it i did link several videos in the description box below so in the description box well first you're going to find the um the information for today's sponsor and we'll go over that later but then you're going to find two prior videos that i've made going over um other body cam footage that we've covered uh recently earlier this week but there's also a video that is like a full in-depth video into ruby frankie kevin frankie eight passengers in their family and their family so if you're not familiar with this case um or you're new to this case and you want to kind of go back and see where it started check that description box and watch that video i think that video is like 35 minutes long and it really gives um an in-depth look into what this family was back when they were just another family on youtube now they had a really big channel they had a really big following but a lot of people did not like ruby frankie and kevin frankie's parenting styles that they thought it was extreme some people said it was borderline child a b u s c while others said that it straight up was and i was kind of those i didn't know this family until the arrest happened and then I did a deep dive into it. And I was like, wow, how did this family stay on YouTube with all of this happening? But they did. There were um, petitions started to have them removed off YouTube. CPS calls were made numerous times. And after the arrest, we found out that CPS went to the Frankie home on several occasions and uh, most of the time never followed up. I mean, there was times they went out there there was one instance where CPS was called. They went out there, knocked on the door, saw a kid walk downstairs on the phone, look, walk back upstairs, and never answered the door. And they closed that case. They never looked any deeper into it. So if you want to do kind of like a full catch up on the family, that video is in the description box below. I've been trying to put all the footage in somewhat of an order because while law and crime, shout out to them for getting all this footage. Um, if you watch Law and Crime, it can it, it can kind of be confusing because it's just the footage is not put in any type of order. So I've been trying to put it in order. The first video that we did like Monday, it was from the beginning. It was from Ruby and Kevin, Kevin Frankie's son, R. Frankie, escaping hildebrandt's home going to the first neighbor's house not getting an answer we saw the doorbell ring camera footage of him showing up at the first house i mean obviously looking emaciated his legs are like this you know so thin so little he did not have shoes on um and then we see him go to the neighbor's house that did call the police we see him um ring the doorbell go to walk off because he thought that nobody was going to answer and then when the owner of the home stepped out and asked you know what he needed he was like can you do me a favor can you take me to a police station and we saw all that play out in the first video we have that we have the ambulance arriving at the neighbor's home seeing to our frankie we see him in the ambulance answering questions or being asked questions the police department they did mute out or they redacted our frankie's responses to the police officer because the police officer was asking you know who put the rope on you who did this to you and we don't hear his response but we do hear the police officer asking him who put the rope on him we can see him um i used a more redacted version of that ambulance video there is a video where you can see his arms and his legs but i used uh the portion that didn't show and then after that we see them going through um going to hildebrandt's home the interaction that she had with the police when she opened the door already being on the phone with the police department we see them go through her house where they find e frankie ruby and kevin frankie's daughter youngest daughter in what seems to be like somewhat of a closet it took them four hours 
to talk her into getting up and walking out of that little closet. Now, while she was in there, they brought her food. Um, it took her a while before she would eat the food. But when she did, she ate a whole personal pizza, which the personal pieces, pizzas are like this big. She ate a whole personal pizza and then half of a whole pizza. Okay. So um, we see her finally walking out of the room. And I think the first video may end. Yeah, it ended there. The second video that we did, I think yesterday, shows Ruby Frankie um, being arrested. Her taken down to the police department. Questions. She didn't answer no questions. First video shows Jody Hildebrandt being taken down and talking to the police, but refusing to answer any questions regarding the Frankie family. Second video shows Ruby Frankie being arrested, taken down to the police department, refusing to answer any questions. Um, we see them finding this secret vault room at Jody Hildebrandt's home where it looked like a place they probably kept the kids. There was a bed that pulled down. It had a toilet. It had a refrigerator. It had a microwave, a bed. I mean, in the drawers, in, in the pull-out drawers, there was rope that appeared to have some sort of red substance on it. Um, I think that was probably the mixture, the cayenne and the honey mixture that was on the rope. I mean, it could have potentially been blood. I don't know. But second video shows that. And it also shows a phone call from one of the officers at Hildebrandt's home put into his superior where he was breaking down what was happening. He was breaking down our Frankie's injuries, how when they were removing the duct tape and the saran wrap, the smell of it, the way that it looked, it, it, trigger warning, heartbreaking. We're going into each video about this family with a trigger warning. So just know that when you do click on this video, it comes with a trigger warning. This is a very um, heartbreaking topic situation. Ruby and Jody Hildebrandt were charged with six counts of felony child abuse. They pled guilty to four counts. They have been sentenced four to 30 years in prison. In four years, they will both go in front of the probation and parole board where we will know more about how long that they will be in prison. Ruby Frankie, she's expressed some regret, remorse. Now, I'm not sure I believe that she really is remorseful, um, I think this could be a ploy because on her jailhouse call, we hear her talk about how being remorseful matters, that you will not get as much time if you appear remorseful. So I do wonder if, you know, she is purposely being remorseful or whatnot. Um, Hildebrandt, not so much. So what the video that we're going to go over now is going to be Ruby Frankie's jailhouse calls. Kind of shocking. The first call is to her husband, Kevin Frankie. Kevin Frankie had been pulled into an interview room when he showed up to the police department to get the kids. He received a call from Ruby Frank Frankie saying, hey, go to this police department, get the kids. He showed up there thinking he was going to get the kids. He didn't know what was happening. He did not know anything. He just knew he was told, go get the kids. So when he shows up to get the kids, they pull him into a room and they're like, what all do you know? He's like, I know nothing. I don't know anything. So um, they have to talk to him for a while to kind of really figure out do you know anything? Um, after a few minutes of talking to him, they tell him what's happening. They're like, well, your wife, Ruby, Frank uh, Ruby Frankie, has been arrested and charged with CA because your son escaped Jody Hildebrandt's home, went to a neighbor's house. He was dehydrated, uh, emaciated, uh, malnourished. Um, he had evidence of being tied and bound and rope burns in his wrist and his legs and kevin frankie was like oh my god that, you know that's horrible that's horrible but he's like this doesn't sound like my wife like i don't i don't know this just doesn't sound like my wife he even says in the interview like i love my wife you know um and in the first call kevin frankie is like well they didn't show me any pictures so i don't know so she calls kevin what we know now is kevin has filed for a divorce I don't know if they, they are doing this for some type of legal purposes, if if he benefits in some type of way, if they go through a divorce. I don't know if he is doing this to make him look better. But I did notice on this phone call, she talks to Kevin in like two phone calls. And then after that, she talks to other people. And I noticed she said that she like that she hadn't talked to Kevin in a minute. Like she was like, that's when I was still talking to Kevin or something like that. Now, these calls are kind of hard to understand. It seems like there's like background noise almost. Um, when I watched them on Long Crime Network, 
there was a lot that I couldn't understand. So I recorded them. I ran them through some editing software to try to kind of fix that, but it still didn't fix it that well. So I did add closed captionings. Uh, listen, it's very hard, like as hard as I could to make sure I got all the words correct. So we're going to listen to Ruby Frankie's jailhouse calls. Jailhouse calls. Now, in the beginning of the calls, she's very like, I didn't do anything wrong. Like, children can be evil. The police are doing too much. The children don't need to go to the hospital for three days. Oh, my God. They're being so extra. They're exaggerating. She's very much like, this is ridiculous. And poor Jody, Poor Jody. She just sticks her neck out on the line for everybody. And, you know, then this is what happens to her. Very much in that same mindset of she did nothing wrong. The children got what they deserved. And Hilda Brandt was a saint. Um, later on in the phone calls, she talks about, you know, realizing what she did and that Hilda Brandt was a fraud. So that's what we're going to be listening to today. Ruby Frankie's jailhouse calls. And they do go from one, you know, they change throughout. So let's just put it there. All right, let's go ahead. Let's get started. Enough talking for me. I do apologize. Can you please see the truth? Yeah. I know it's so scared. I'm, I'm, where I see the facts, I see the truth. And that's what I'm, what I'm gathering. You know my heart. What are they charging you with? Two degrees of sickness. Two charges of trajectory felonies for child abuse. Two charges of second degree felony child abuse. Yes. Um, okay. Wow. Uh, that's very serious. I have. It's interesting. I had the prompting over the last month to read Victor Frankl's. <laughs> I was reading him, and it was like you, the worst part was not knowing. And he said, those who, he said he had a room. A, an inmate this man search for me and her prisoner in and the worst part and the greatest bringing of depression was not the lack of food and it wasn't the weather conditions it was not knowing how long it would last so i think i was too part for this i do feel strong mm -hmm. and so calm and you know what they they may adults have a really hard time understanding that children can be full of evil and what that takes to do you see what it takes to fight evil. It's not the person you're fighting. And to look like something it's not. And you've been there, you know that. And so I don't know any adults who are going to see the game. So I'm calm about this and I just pray that you'll hang in there. You have yeah. one minute remaining for this call. I think I can call back, but Yeah, but just in case, um I'm preparing to step up and fight for the children they've been taken. And they're gonna be there's going to be a hearing in the next couple of days here in Provo. I'm sorry, I just I speak no kids to the will you say that one more time? Yes. I'm prepared to step up and fight yes. for the children. They've been taken into custody. They're in foster care and there's going to be a hearing within the next uh, two or three days. What about Abby and Julie? Them too. All four were taken. Where did they go to get Abby and Julie? I don't know. They, they, while I was with them, they got Abby and they were looking. You have for exceeded Julie. the allowable time for this call. Goodbye. Yeah. Yeah, Christ. When I saw how long this separation was lasting, I wanted to think of some ways that I could bring in money or make some money if she didn't ever come back. So I would, that's when I asked if you would co-sign out alone if I got the house. Maybe I could Airbnb it or rent it out or I've been playing with numbers in my head and I think I could make something, but I don't want to be dumb. I'm just, I want to be very conservative. So I pulled the money and I have it in the bag. And with you? Do the police have it? Well, I, I don't know what the police took. I don't know what the police have. But the bag was a Jody's house? They can't just take people's money. 
I mean, that's, that's not right. Well, they're not going to take the money, but when they have a search warrant, they have access to everything in the house. Sure. Yeah. I I have a feeling we're going to need that money. We might do. We might do. So, um, I haven't been making big purchases. I've been very conservative. I think the biggest expense has been the kids going in. That, um, they have enough curriculum to get them for a couple of years. So, oh, um, okay. I just received a text from Ted Dawson out of the blue. Who I haven't heard from in years. What, he just texted you? Yeah, the what story's is out. So he said, Stormy sent me an article and it just broke my heart. I just wanted you to know I'm thinking about you and if I can ever be a resource, we are always here. Are we in the news? It sounds like that at least you're in the news. I don't know about me. I don't know what he's talking about. But. I'm wondering if they went to Sherry. Like ask a question. I don't know. He's looking to public. I, I know they are. And a couple of months ago, Business Insider was reaching out to me, and I ignored their email. But um, I'm going dark. This is a witch. I'm not a BYU. I'm not a BYU anymore, so I don't know how they're going to find me. Yeah, maybe it was a blessing. This is a witch. I. I He's been after me for years. And she's not a Have you shared that with the detective? I have not said a word until he has an attorney. Okay, well, you know that this phone call is being recorded. You have one minute remaining for this call. Yes, that will come out. That will come out. Okay. But when we were, when we were driven to the jail, um, the detective was putting us in car and Jody said, you. So, They're going to be in the hospital for three days. So weird. It's just not necessary. I'm trying to exaggerate this. Well, well, I, well, I don't. Adult they didn't show me. The hero. Well, they didn't show me any pictures or anything with the way they described it. It was very serious. You have exceeded the allowable time for this call. Goodbye. You, know, you called. You had to put her in a in a chair. It, it was it was horrible. It was torturous last night. Hearing the screaming and, and the banging of people. It's like okay, that's that's you know upsetting. But the most upsetting thing is that I am completely misunderstood. That is the most horrible feeling. Like my own family misunderstands me. They misinterpret me. And and. Poor Jody, they, they misinterpret her, they misunderstand her. She puts her neck out on the line for people and then they get mad at her. I mean, it is just horrendous. It's horrendous. And you know what? Every Joseph Smith, every every wonderful man of God had time to be misunderstood. That's right. And so I'm gonna get out of this. Who knows? I maybe maybe in ten days I'll get out of this if I'm you know, if the if truth prevails. Right now, or you know, who knows? Like twenty years? I I don't know. I don't know how long. But I'm gonna step out. I'm gonna say I went through everything. I have seen God's children suffer. All the people here, my Joe tell me, have been. I have to point out really quickly, and I wanted to try to let this play all the way through, but I have to point out how she hasn't asked about the kids. How are they? For three days in the hospital. It's like, oh, that's weird. They're trying to exaggerate it. Never does she seem concerned about her kids, their well-being at all. She's only concerned about herself, about herself. And then what did she just say? Because that really threw me for a loop. Oh, I've seen God's children suffer at your hands. They've suffered at your hands. Beautiful women, but they've been hurt. You know, they've been deceived into drugs and my mother has just had so much compassion for them and I, mm. I have compassion for the cops and I have for myself and I 
<laughs> and then to be told that I'm suicidal, I'm like, no, no, that's not true. Anyway, um, no, if you need to let me... That was either Sherry or one of your siblings. Well, they're all in cahoots. One means all of them, but yes, you're right. In your hearing, I don't know if you've considered this, I don't know if it would be helpful, but you could have the house. <clears throat> and, if, well, and if all the kids go to the house, you've got room there, and I, I will I will gladly stay away and let you guys be. Okay, I have to grab the rest of it. I had to break it down in two parts. Um, So when he says, I would rather Sherry or one of your sisters have the kids, She's like, she's like, yeah, yeah, you're right. I mean, they're all in cahoots. So for what, you know, if it's one, it's all of them. They're, they're all in cahoots. That's, I wonder how Sherry feels he, hearing that. They're all in cahoots, you know? So I don't know if it's helpful. Yeah. I'm just giving it to you if it is. Thank you. And in the discussions with, with my attorney, that, that's the only way that we're going to retain custody of the children. That's right. Every day, not retain. There, he's, he, he's 35 years in this, and he said, even if you are acquitted and um, are released, they will place legal restrictions on your access to the under 18 children. I figured such. I figured such. God told me. God told me. I figure such. He says something about facing 35 years. And if you are released, you'll be placed on restrictions where you probably can't be around the kids that are under the age of 18. Oh, I figure such. I figure such. I don't know. If I went to jail and somebody said, you know, if you do get out, you probably won't be able to see your children that are under the age of 18. My response would not be like, oh, I figure such. It, I would be devastated. There was no care in her voice. And I feel like a lot of times, oh, God told me, listen, you were listening to Satan, not God. Everything you did was not God telling you. That was Satan telling you to do that. She is possessed. I agree. I agree. When I was driving before I called you, I didn't have any information. I didn't know anything. And the spirit said, your children are going to be removed. And I just, I cried out loud. I mean, no, I'm not, I'm not done. I'm not ready. What does that mean? What does that mean? Okay, as a Christian myself, I pray. There are times I feel led to do things. Um, and to me, that's like God leading me, right? But I don't ever feel like, I don't ever feel like I could say, like, God told me. I can be like, God led me. I feel like I felt led to do this. And I feel like God led me to do that. So if I ever felt like it's just going to be taken, is that coming from God? Um, and my response was, no, I'm not ready. What does that mean? I'm not ready. I, what, is, what does I'm not ready mean? To lose your kids? So it's like it's something that happens and it's only a matter of time. That's a very weird response. So even if you thought God told you, you know, they're going to remove your kids. I'm not ready. I, I would be, why me? What do you mean? Why, why am I going to lose my kids? Not I'm not ready. And God told me I'm done. And I just, oh, so Satan has taken everything oh, away from me that I love. That's true. And I'm a good woman. I don't do naughty things. I don't do naughty things. I'm a really good girl. Ruby, I'm going to do everything that I can okay. to keep <sighs> truth in our family and thank you i'm i'm committed to our family i'm committed to you and our marriage no matter what happens thank you thank you i will be here to support you in any way that i can well thank you for stepping up this, i this... do need to go but okay. all right call me back mm -hmm when or if you need when will you find out how can i call you when should i call so i find out what they say i don't know how long this will go but if you call this afternoon i, I will know this is a preliminary hearing so there will be no 
Okay. Well, it's hard to get a phone around here. I asked for a phone and it took hours to get it. So I mean, it may not be until later tonight. So okay. what? Okay. All right. What they're talking about here. Um, he, he has a hearing concerning the custody of the children, right? So she's like, you know, when can I call back to find out how that went? So she wants to, she wants to know if he got the kids or not. Good luck. I will be praying for you. Okay. Bye. Bye. This is a call from and paid for by Ruby. If you don't wish to talk, hang up now. Hello. Hello. We're using Telmate. Can you hear me? Yes. Can you hear us? Yeah. Okay, that it? was over there. It's uh nine nine thirty. We're good. Okay. Right? Yeah, uh -huh. yeah, we're eight hours ahead. Okay. I'm, I'm glad you could call us back. Yeah, I haven't used the phones very much. They're kind of hard to figure out, but um, yeah, I think I figured out how to use. I don't think this one will shut me off. I think the one I called you with a free call, and this one will be paid for um, by my account. Kevin, okay. I had to put some money in it. So, but I, I was saying I, I can't say everything that I want to say, but um, I really did feel, I really did feel like the arrest was like a rescue. Like I just felt so many angels around, and it wasn't like a release. It was just really kind of surreal, kind of strange. Um, so her story has changed. And let me tell you, from the video that we saw yesterday, I think we played it yesterday, her attitude was not an attitude of like coming out of, of a, out of a confusion because she felt like she was being saved and she didn't understand why. She was very arrogant with those, with the police officers looking at them like when they're like, do you have anything on you? Uh, you know, um, what's your last name? you you could you know i could somewhat believe her if maybe she would have said you know what at first i really i didn't understand why i was being arrested I, I felt like i hadn't done anything wrong um but whenever i got to jail and my lawyer started telling me x y and z that jody was denying everything then i started then i started feeling angels around, i don't know that the angels around me and feeling freed the moment the cuffs went on no you didn't you didn't act so like your body language did not tell us you felt free your body language told us you hated those police officers that you thought they were so beneath you that you thought they didn't understand what you were doing they would never be able to understand be able to understand what you were doing that you were working for god and they were evil at this whole she, she should have come up with something better because we can now see what she looked like during her arrest. And that, no, those, that don't match. Okay, I just keep thinking about, you know, President Nelson's talk, you know, things for us, so I know he said in the past about my ethic thinking, and, and he, he's given a lot of context to, you know, how small this life really is, and I'm just so grateful. How many people, you know, were the grave not, not having woken up. And I just, I want to use this time. And I have everything this time to touch you, to be done, do what I can. But the Lord knows I love them and my family. And I've had many experiences here to kind of guide my thinking like I don't know my, my attorney's been really good did you know my attorney is I believe that God has a hand in the old Ruby you know being uh, kind of set free or whatever you want to call it um, that you know thing being gone yeah absolutely Absolutely. I could not come out of this without, without his grace, without his mercy, without his help. This has been the strangest and the most miraculous intervention. 
it, it put everybody where they needed to be. It separated me from Jody, so I'm not hearing her. And I think just being gone and not hearing her has cleared a lot of things up for me. And it put the kids in a place where they're you have exceeded the allowable time for this call. Goodbye. Um, did you did you see that Jody pled guilty today? I did see that. Yes. Is that a relief for you? Mm hmm Yeah. It's yeah. a big relief. It's a yeah. big relief. There there would have been positive the other way too, had she not pled guilty. There's enough evidence that she would have been could have been convicted for life. Um, yeah. That would have been messy. It would have been really messy. And yeah, the kids I'm would have. So do you want her the same outcome no matter what now? Or is there a chance that it would be different? That's a, that's a really good question. That's one that I've asked Lamar. Um, no, we can still have different outcomes. So um, Ellie asked a little bit about this. Um, I wrote it out in a text um, to her, but so the next thing that will happen, I will fill out and she will fill out a probation and probation and there's another P um, paperwork. And basically you go through your history and you tell them your history, which there's no history on me. There, there's nothing, no criminal history, no mental health history, nothing. And I'm also hiring um a professional to do a mental health evaluation just to say she's she's good like there's no mental health problems at all and then that will go to my probationary board jody she can lie on her paperwork and she probably will i don't think she's going to give them her history i think in the interview it's going to be apparent that she's mentally ill Mm -hmm. um, and so that will affect how long someone, you know, because they're looking how, how repentant are you? How much responsibility are you taking? How, mm -hmm. how are you aware that what you've done is wrong? And she's not, she's the only reason she pled is because she didn't want to do life. She knew I would testify. Um, the other thing is on my plea deal, when I come up for probation, the the prosecuting attorney can, um, will often, if they think that you're a danger to society, will talk to the probationary board and, and will write them a letter saying, I think she needs to stay where she is. Um, he's going to stay neutral and not write any letter when my probation comes up, which is a really big deal. But for her, he's, he's not going to stay neutral. So we can come up to probation and I can get off on probation and she may not. So what does probation look like? Like what does that all entail? It can look like several different things. I think I'm still learning about this and I think it's, I never realized how complicated it is. I always thought you pled oh, guilty and they tell you how long you're in. Yeah. There's a lot of terminology to know. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you know, half of the stuff that is said goes over my head and then I have to go, you know, I come back and I ask the girls here, I'm like, what does this mean? What does this mean? Yeah. Um, but Probation could look like going home, like you could go home. Sometimes, mm -hmm. um, you know, it, it might look like going home with with restrictions, like you can go home, but you need to live with somebody who's responsible and you can't be around certain people. Like they may say you could go home if your parents agree to house you, but you can't go home to where your kids are living. It could look like something like that okay. or it could look like something where I have an ankle monitor or it could look like you can go home if you pay a $10,000 fine or maybe it could look like um, 
instead of serving the rest of your time, we'll give you some good time and you can go home in half the time. Or So I, I think that you probation, getting off on probation, I think looks like there's several different ways that that could happen. Oh, I see. That's good to know. Yeah. And is that mm-hmm. usually after you've already served full time then? Say, say that one more time. That's after you have served some time? Yeah. Yeah. And I don't know what that is going to be. I don't know if it's one of the girls said that it would be for me six months, but I've also heard it could be four years. And some people serve several years before they ever see their probation board. So I, I'm really still, I mean, I could be in there four years. I could be in there 30. Like, I really don't know. Yeah. And that will come in February? Mm Mm-hmm, on February 20th. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, the news that I saw today, Jody's um, sentence hearing is also February 20th. So I'm going to make a request that we be transferred in two different vans. I don't think they're going to accommodate that. Oh, Um, do they? Okay, I see. Yeah, when we so when I went to the courthouse last week, what they do, and I and I they did this when they transported me to Utah County as well. They pull all the girls. There's only two housing here for girls. There's not very many girls here. There's okay. many for the men, and so they take the girls and they put them in a cell together in a holding cell to wait, and then they get all the men together and they put all the men in the cells, and then they start putting on. The ankle bracelets and the chains and the mm-hmm. everything on the men while you're so you're sitting in a cell with these women you're going to the court with for an hour and you're sitting with them and then they pull the girls out and they line you up and then they put the shackles on you and then they take the men out to the van the men's van and then they, they take the women out to the women's van and then you drive to the courthouse together and then they take How you out far they, away is your place from the courthouse there in St. George? Um, 30 minutes, 40 minutes. Okay. Mm-hmm. And um, and then you sit in a cell at the court. So if someone's hearing at 9, this is what happened to me. There was a girl that went with me, and her hearing was at 9, but mine wasn't until 11. So she went in, and she had like a five-minute hearing. And then we sat in the cell and talked for two hours until it was my turn. And then we oh. rode back together. So you you pretty much spend several hours together, whoever's okay. going to the court that day with you. Interesting. So that means on February 20th, it would be you and her going together. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. When was the last thing you talked to her? Was it that day? Mm-hmm. It was when we were arrested. Yeah. I went, I left early in the morning to go to a dentist appointment with Julie. We left at like three in the morning and she calls me sometime in the morning. And I, and so I went back down, but when I got to the house, I mean, it, it looked like, it looked like the movies. There was a red fire truck. There was a black van with tinted windows there was there were two ambulances there were 20 cop cars i mean it was did you just sit in your car no i i pulled up and found a spot to park she lives on a cul-de-sac i parked in the cul-de-sac and i walked up and the the driveway was just full of cops and i just walked up to the cops and mm. They said, they said, are you the mother? And I nodded my head. And so they took me in and put me in the casita. And I sat there for a couple hours. Mm-hmm. I just sat there. And then um, they, they were finishing looking through the house and stuff, I think. And um, 
some of the guys were coming in and out with pizza. And so I think, I think Eve was still there because the ambulance car was there eating pizza with the police. And then, um, and then once, once the kids were taken in the ambulance cars, then the detective came and patted me down and arrested me and then took me to the courthouse for questioning, which I didn't. And I'm glad I didn't say anything because Lamar was really helpful. Like, if you ever get arrested, don't say anything. I just didn't say anything. And she was like... Find Lamar. Did he was he just assigned to you coincidentally, or did you? Um, so she has a she has an attorney that she's used for connections, and mm-hmm. and I called him and no one answered. But then she called him, and he said, "I only do like business law. I don't do criminal law. But here's a number of two people who do that I would highly recommend." And so she gave the two numbers and I got the number from Kevin. I don't, I don't know how the numbers got from, I don't, I don't know how, but um, that he, Kevin said, here's your attorney and this is her attorney. And so and that was the last time I talked to Kevin it was a couple of days after my arrest. But so I didn't see Jody at all when I went to the house to turn myself in. I didn't see her. Um, and and I went, and they took me to the courthouse, and the detective was like, I've got all night, we can talk all night, and I didn't say anything, I just said, I, I want an attorney. So um, I could hear Kevin in the hallway talking, and then he left, and when they took me out of the room, they took me outside, cuffed me, and, and said, again, they cuffed me again, and then me they told me you're under arrest for and then they told me two two of the charges and then they had me get in the in the patrol car and that's when I saw Jody. I thought Jody was also in the patrol car. And um she she had surgery on her shoulder and she couldn't put her hands behind her back so then they pulled her out and changed up the way they arrested her so she could drive with her hands in front of her. And then we had about a 40 minute, 45 minute drive to the jail. And that was the last time I spoke to her. We were in the back and um, we didn't say a whole lot. Um, I mean, we talked all the time, but I don't remember really saying a whole lot. We sang a hum, like hummed a couple of hymns and Okay, y'all know what that reminds me of? That they hummed a couple of hymns and they, they sang. What did that remind you guys of? Does that does that remind anybody of anything? The Charles Manson case where the, the ladies, when they were brought into court as they're walking down the, the hallway of the courthouse, shackled, they're they're like singing and stuff and they're they're humming. That's what it made me think of. They're like sitting in the cop car, like singing and and humming hymns and it made me think of that also um the other day i, I typed a post and i accidentally called him Marilyn manson manson and it's sort of charles manson um that was a reference to mama june because somebody said i can't believe mama june and them have fans and i said even Marilyn manson has fans and so you know not shocked that they do and somebody said why wouldn't Marilyn manson have fans like do you mean charles manson and i'm like yes yes that's who i meant um Anyways, I, that made that brought me back to that. Um, yes, Quentin Simon. There was a hearing for Quentin Simon the other day, and basically, um, I think they just went over whether or not she was going to testify. I could be wrong. I have to look back at that, but it was a very short hearing, and she said she was not going to testify. She she was still justifying the whole time. She's like, "Don't worry, don't worry. We'll have our day in court." And then when we were booked in. They put us in separate cells, and we've been in separate cells ever since. Do you hate talking about that kind of stuff? Does it trigger anything, or do you, or is it just? No, I don't. I I think it's. No, I don't mind talking about it. 
maybe good for me to talk about it. I don't know if you <laughs> like no, talking I mean, about it. I was just wondering if it triggered anything. But yeah. if you're doing okay mentally, and then that's okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's, I think the... I think putting the pieces together and just seeing, like, she knew she was lying the whole time. Like, I, it, and it's embarrassing, too, to, like, repeat it. It's like, oh, my gosh, how gullible was I? Oh, my gosh, how how much power I gave this person, and I didn't see it. But when I realized, so, so she had, her attorney's name is Doug, Terry, and mine's Lamar, and, and Lamar, you know, maybe a month into it, he's maybe not even that long. He's like, Jody denies everything. She denies having anything to do with this. And I was shocked. I was like, what? And I'm, I'm still telling Lamar, like all of the justifications and all of this, you know, I'm talking like a criminal. I sound like a mad person. He was so patient yeah. with me. He was so patient with me. He would just look at me and like kind of dumbfounded, like, like I said, two plus two is seven, and I really believed it, and he would just stare at me. I'm like, what am I saying that's so off? But that's because I really believed it. But, but then when I heard that Jody was not talking like that, she was denying the whole thing, it told me she knew all along. It's like, it's like a little kid who doesn't know it's wrong to pee in their underwear. Like, they don't know. They're not embarrassed yeah. by it. It's like, oh, oh, I was supposed to pee in the toilet. Oh, Oh, oops, but you get That's a six-year-old, <laughs> you know, you get a six-year-old who knows they're supposed to pee in the toilet and they're peeing down the heater vent, they're going to try to hide it. That's when I realized she knew, she knew all along and she's hiding it. And then I was like, crap, what, what am I done? And that's when things kind of started turning. I was like, she was, she's not been honest. I didn't. I didn't know she wasn't honest. I didn't know she would lie. And then it's like, what else has she been lying about? Where else are, have I been deceived? Yeah. What was that? Oh, no, I was just yeah, agreeing. Yeah. 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 And it was just like this, the little string that started pulling apart this fabric. I'm like, oh my gosh, what have I done? Like, what? So I can talk about Lamar it now. Said, yeah, go ahead. Not, not, Lamar was just very, very kind that day that we met with him. It was a very oh. kind of visit with us. Oh, like miraculous. He, like, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. He and his wife. Mm -hmm. he yeah, he had, he had a way of like, he didn't beat around the bush. Like there were some times he would say things that were shocking to me. Like he, he would like repeat what I said, but he would say it in a different tone so I could hear myself. And he's like, is that really what you think? And I'm like, oh, and he would. You have one minute remaining for this call. Do you, do you want to end the call or do you want me to call you back? How do you want to? Um, we can end for today and then we'll, okay. we can always talk again. So. Yeah, I'm just really glad that he's got your, that he's there to kind of help you through it. And mm -hmm. yeah, well, that first night I was in the jail, it, I just felt really strongly like I'm sending you help. Help is coming. Yeah, and I just yeah. felt like that was that was Lamar, and he's been very, very helpful. I'm grateful yeah. for him. Well, that's what we've all been saying for this whole time. So mm -hmm. I'm glad that. Even it's a different kind of help, but I'm glad it's finally here. Me too. Me too. I'll take it. Like I, I hate this, but I'll, I'm taking it. Of course. Yeah. Um, it was good to talk to you. Okay, so that was the release phone calls for Ruby Frankie. And like I said, the the initial calls was her to Kevin. You know, defending Jody defending herself, making it out like the cops were exaggerating the levels of the level of the injuries to the children when he's like, they're going to be in the hospital for three days. She's like, what's so weird? I feel like they're just exaggerating this. Like they did not do 
what was done to those kids. Now, Hildebrandt, we're going to go over her calls to um, next week. We're going to go over Hildebrandt's calls because her calls are very interesting. Her calls are a, very, you know, re religious based. Oh, I received a blessing right before this happened. And um, uh, the bishop told me that I, I think it's the bishops that do the blessings. He told me that I was going to be teaching, preaching or my work would be in a new way, not preaching or teaching, that my work would be in a new way that it would be changing soon. So I really think God placed me here. I mean, I didn't do anything wrong and I don't deserve it, but I really think God placed me here. This is where I'm supposed to be for some you know, unknown reason to me. And the attorney is like, you know, those pictures are really going to hurt you in court. And she's like, well, we didn't do those things. He did them to himself, uh, insinuating that R injured himself to that extent. So we are going to go over Hildebrandt's calls next week. Also, we are going to go over um, Kevin Frankie's interview. And I'm going to do a little body language analysis on Kevin Frankie as well. Um, it probably won't be the whole video because the whole video is like 45 minutes long and that'll be a really hard, that'll take forever. Um, but I think we're going to watch the interview and then I'll come back and do body language just from like the first few minutes of the interview. And then when he was told about the children and what had happened to the children. So it'll be like two little bits that we'll pull out that we'll go over that. As you guys know, I'm in school for body language. I, I'm not, I don't proclaim to be an expert, but I'm pretty knowledgeable on it. Um, I've been interested in it for like probably coming up on two years. I watch a lot. I read a lot. And now I'm in school and I've been in school since January for it. So it's something that, that and even if I see a gesture and I don't know what it could mean, I am, I, I can figure it out by going back into uh, like my schoolwork or my notes and usually kind of figure it out. Now, gestures can mean a ton of different things. Like, you know, um, so you have to think about the context, the setting, um, putting your hands in your pockets could mean you're kind of closing yourself off. But if it's in a cold setting, you're cold, you know, so you really have to take things into context as well. So I do think I'm going to do one video of um, just the interview and then come back and do a body language uh, video. Anyways. So this video, like I said, it kind of shows her changing her tune. Now, while she why she changes her tune, I don't know. I mean, it could be to help her in court, you know. Um, I mean, like she even said, if you have remorse, you will get less time. So I don't know if that's why she's appearing remorseful, remorseful or what. Um, does anybody have any questions? Also, I do want to address something in the comment section because I see two people kind of, you know, talking about um, the LDS and all of that. And and I think there is probably a misunderstanding. Uh, Jay Marie said something uh, about, you know, the LDS, like encouraging uh, their members to have children. And I never, I will say, I never saw any comments about them encouraging them to abuse their children, only that that's something that's a part of the LDS. Um, I know like uh, Catholics, uh, I don't think they believe in birth control or wait, do they? Do Catholics, I have Baptist, Catholic, Mormon, um, very close. I mean, my mom's side is uh, Baptist, my dad's side is Catholic. And then my in-laws are Mormons. So um, we try, we, we don't really, we don't talk bad about people's beliefs and, and religions. Everybody has their right to, but I do think it's been, I, I think it was a misunderstanding. Um, so I don't want anybody to get their feelings hurt thinking that anybody in the chat was saying that if you're LDS, you abuse your children or that you're a bad person. Because I don't think that's, I, I, from the comment that I read, Jay Marie was just saying like, um, you know, they were, they are LDS, Kevin and Ruby Frankie, and, you know, you were encouraged to have children. But I think Jay Marie was saying, it's her belief that she didn't think that Ruby really wanted children. But she was in a religion that kind of encouraged it. So she did it because she believed that's what she was supposed to do. Uh, but she really didn't want to have children. And that's why she 
maybe um, had some like anger towards them. Correct me if I'm wrong. Okay, I was just kind of thinking because I'm like, I remember like hearing, I remember it being like Catholics don't believe in birth control. And then I was like, wait a minute, because I have family members that are Catholic and they take birth control. So maybe I'm wrong there. I, I think it could be, honestly, I do think it could be each church it kind of you know because i know i've been to different baptist church churches and one preacher say this and one preacher say that um no feel free to comment i just want to make sure it gets cleared up so nobody's feelings is hurt i don't want anybody to think that we are trying to bash their religion we don't do that here um i just want to make sure that everybody understands what is being said so nobody takes offense to it feel free to comment i just want to make sure because as as the phone call was happening, I'm like reading the comments and I was trying to post them up on the on the board. And I saw Jay Marie's initial comment, um, you know, like, oh, well, Ruby's LDS. I think they encourage people to have kids, but I don't think Ruby ever really wanted to be a parent. So that's why she maybe acted the way that she act, maybe abused her children. Um, and then I saw your comment. Um, so I really think it was just a misunderstanding. Uh, and, and Colby's like, yeah, no, that's what I meant. I mean, not Colby. Jay Marie's like, yeah, no, that's what I meant. Um, she and Jay Marie's like, I don't want you to feel disrespected. Sometimes, you know, when we read things, we don't know the tone, we don't, so it's kind of easy to misunderstand just words, you know. Um, okay, Hadley Charles didn't used to believe in birth control back in the day. Uh, and Jay Marie said, she's, she's sorry, she don't want you to think that she was being disrespectful. Uh, everybody that follows me knows that i have family members that are mormons so um yeah uh jay marie so i don't we try to be respectful of everybody's beliefs here the one thing and there's several religions that encourage people to have kids you know um so i think she was just saying like they're in one of those religions when she her belief was that ruby really didn't want to have them um Okay, I may have missed the initial comment, and that's very much possible um, if I did, but I just want to make sure. She's apologizing if she offended you, and she just wants to make sure you know that she wasn't trying to, like, talk down on the LDS. That wasn't her, her intent. So I want to make sure you see that she's doing that as well, so hopefully everybody can, can be okay here. You know, everybody's free to comment. Um, yeah. Some people do their own thing and use birth control, but the Catholic religion doesn't believe in birth control. And maybe that's what it was, you know? Maybe it was just LB, you're mixing me and Jay Marie up. Okay. There's both of us. Okay, who was the conversation? I thought the conversation was between Jamie and um Laura Lee. Was it was it or no? And if I said Jay Marie, I do apologize. Exactly, Kate. One thing we can all agree is Ruby Frankie is not quite right. Who does that to their children? I mean, I feel like you have to be possessed to do something like that. God's not telling you to starve your children. There's no way that, that, that doesn't happen, you know? Um, so there's that, you guys. We're going to continue to cover this case. We're going to continue to go over it. And before I get off, I do want to give a shout out to today's sponsors. Real quick, y'all look what my children made me. Y'all look at that. This is their hand. This is their hand. Um, so my children went to an Easter egg hunt this morning at church with their grandmother. And they brought me back these little Kennedy and Coco made me little homemade bouquets. Um, and then my sponsor is one of my favorites, you guys. Rose Forever. Y'all, this is ceramic. A lot of my other bouquets are in like velvet boxes um this is like heavy duty ceramic this is um oh which one was this y'all i don't remember these flowers i don't know if i, I can say it right hydrangea hydrangeas Hydra how do you say it look at these these are these are this is a new one um so when they reached out to me this time i went to their site and i was like oh my god love these love these love these so these are beautiful. It's a mixture of colors, off-white, um, light pink, 
dark pink. I uh, love this. So the name of the company is Rose Forever. It is based out of New York. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. So they launched in 2019. They design luxurious rose boxes with natural roses that stay fresh and gorgeous for up to a year. These, listen, I have, this is my fourth one. My, no, this is my fifth one. This is my fifth bouquet. I have the, so this is my last one that I received. This is my Valentine's Day box. The pink, look at that. I have several red boxes. I have two red boxes. And then I had a, I had a um, Halloween box that was orange. The uh, roses were orange. Beautiful, 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 beautiful. And they will stay good for up to a year, you guys. You don't have to do anything to them. You just sit them where you want them and leave them there to be pretty, okay? Each rose is handcrafted by a professional flower artist and treated with natural oil to preserve its freshness and beauty. Love it. The flowers are carefully arranged inside of a hat box inspired by a Parisian chic style, offering dozens of design, design options based on customer and influencer feedback. Enormous choice of rose boxes, box shapes, materials allow customization to match individual taste or home interior design. And I will show you guys some of the um, other options that you can find on their site. I love the dome. I've been wanting a dome. You can do heart shape. You can do marble. You can do velvet. You can do transparent boxes. They are beautiful. In my description box, the first link in the description box will take you to the site Rose Forever, and you can get your own. Um, they run several uh, sales all the time. They're all the time running sales. But if you, I have two codes for you, and you can use these codes together. Code L40 will get you $40 off, and then code L will get you free shipping. So Mother's Day is right around the corner. You guys, if y'all want one, give your husband a little nudge and be like, hey, look at this. I love these. And, you know, maybe he'll get the hint to get them for you. Good for a year. And I have had a few people, I've had a few people say, oh, those are kind of expensive. Um, but here's the thing. They're good for a year. My husband, Sean, used to buy me an arrangement like twice a year. And he would spend anywhere from $80 to $100. And they would last two weeks if I was lucky. $80 to $100 two weeks. And he would do that like twice a year, right? So that's $200 for more like a month. A month, okay? Um, You can spend $200 and they'll last a year or $100 in the last a year. So this is one of my favorite brands to work with because I just love, 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 love the bouquets. JT says, hey, Elle, how are you doing today? Pretty flowers. I have to ask, will you do a video on P. Diddy Raid? And the quiet on the set. I've been considering it. I've really been considering it, okay? Um, Sean really wants me to, and, and there's just so much that I, I would have to look into, but the quiet on the set documentary, I haven't seen that yet. So I would need to watch that first. And I am really behind on work because of everything that, um, sorry, Sean used to, he still does. He still does. Sorry. Sorry. Uh, he said, used to still do. Um, so mother's day is coming up. If you want it, like I said, let your husband know. Get them for your mom, get them for your girlfriend. If she is a mom and has young children, but ain't got no baby daddy in the picture and you want to give her a little something, you know, I see an email, but thank you, Jay Marie. Oh, also, if you send me emails about content and I don't respond to you, please continue to send it. Uh, I just lack time with school kids and the channel. I just lack time that usually when I see it, I just click on it and I get to read it. And then if I want to do a video on it, I get right to it right then to get the video out. So please don't send me ideas just because I don't respond. I promise you, it's very much appreciated. So please continue. Anyways, I love you guys. We'll continue to follow the um, Frankie case, or the, the Ruby Frankie 8 passengers case. We're going to continue going over all this content that's come out. And like I said, I am trying to put it in somewhat of an order. So next we will do Jody Hildebrandt's call. Then we'll do um, Kevin's interview, and then we'll do a body language video 
of Kevin's interview. So anyways, I'm going to be doing one more live today. I do hope so anyways. So just make sure you are subscribed after having an extremely rough shift. I had one coworker who was old. She doesn't understand me and I have another one. Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry about that. Everybody have a good Friday. And everybody have a happy Easter. And um, hopefully I'll be back in a little bit. So make sure you are subscribed so you do get the notification. Also, you can follow me on my other social media accounts. They are all linked in the description box below because I do usually post on there before I go live as well. Um, all right. So I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye, guys.